New Star GP is the brightest, flashiest F1 game I've played in a long time. It's an arcade F1 racer spanning five decades of racing, featuring iconic tracks and some iconic driver names as well. I've been playing it for the last week and it's been a heap of fun so far, so I'll be going through the game, what's included, and if I recommend picking it up. So for starters, New Star GP is available now on Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, and Steam. It costs 45 Australian dollars, which is like 27 US dollars or Euro. And it came out at the start of March. I should have played it earlier, but I was busy doing iRacing Rain. So I'm playing it now. It's made by a UK developer called New Star Games. They've previously worked on a bunch of mobile games, including Retro Bowl and New Star Soccer. And you can see that coming through in spite in this game. There's like big icons on screen and dual currencies and things like that. You can play it on controller or on keyboard on PC. I've found the devs had said they're working on wheel support, but it's not in the game at the moment. When it does come in, you can go like full virtual racing arcade setup if you want, but uh, not yet. Included in the game are two modes. You have championship mode, which is your quick play mode. You can race with up to four people and you also have career mode and career mode is is surprisingly in-depth. You have a bunch of seasons and you progress across five decades of F1 starting in the 1980s all the way to the 2020s. In career mode you'll be going through 10 races in a season and they each feature race weekends which have a bunch of challenges before a race at the end of it like real life. Each race weekend features like the challenges that you'll be getting. It can be like a reverse race where you drive the track backwards. You can get like a time attack where you have to set a fastest lap or you get like elimination racing, which is kind of fun. And it lets you learn the track before the Grand Prix at the very end. The Grand Prix race, you start off the back and it's got a bunch of strategy and you get to decide how you want to try and win. You've got things like tire compounds, there's hard and soft tires as well as wet tires. And you can run like a one or a two stop. You can like fill it up with fuel and like run really long or you can do all sorts of stuff. It's got a surprising amount of strategy. There is also weather to be aware of. The rain can roll in midway through a race and force you to pit for wets. The rain is kind of interesting. Puddles form on the track. They look awesome as you drive through them and they actually cool your tires down as well. This game is pure arcade though. So there'll be like a six lap race and you'll be pitting like every two laps or something. So <laughs> be ready for that. You'll also have to manage fueling. There is no like real gauge on how long your fuel tank lasts. So you kind of just have a, to take a good guess every time you refuel, but it is so fun having like a, a full strategy race in a really short amount of time. You can be racing like a one stop versus people in a two stop and trying to see who comes out ahead. It's really cool. If you make a mistake in the race, there is a rewind function, which is basically the Codemasters rewind function with like a VCR sound effect over the top, which is kind of cool. And there is also a boost bar you need to manage, pure arcade and it refills at the end of every lap. Once you're out of the Grand Prix, hopefully you won, you go back to the garage and this is where you spend your winnings or your bucks on lots of parts to improve your car. Each part that improves your car has like a noticeable difference and you get much faster through the season. You can also buy parts off other teams for like limited amount of laps. This is kind of an interesting system. It reminds me of real life when that Force India team basically created a, a rip off Mercedes. So you can kind of do the same thing in this game. You also have three staff members working for you that offer you perks that you can choose to have active. You have a limited amount of slots to use, but the perks are really interesting. I had some ones that included like slipstream behind other drivers. There were other ones that included like a re start option or more grip off track or one that even had me starting from ninth place instead of 10th. If you're really confident you can select some perks as well that offer you more winnings if you win a race or use a specific strategy. I had a perk that offered me more money if I used a two stop and won a race and I was like midway through a race I used this perk and I'd done my two pit stops and it started raining and I was like do I pit for wet or do I stay out and try and get the extra money? Um, yeah, it forces you into those kind of confusing decisions. There's also a morale system for your staff members. So if you select their perks to use, they'll get happier. And there will often be times during a race weekend where they'll come at you with questions and you'll need to spend time with one or the other. I had my comms manager wanting to like sit down and do a bunch of work in the books with me. And I also had my lead pit crew member, Max Fuel, which is an awesome name, wanting to go out and like get on the beers midway through the race weekend. And I said no, and he got really disappointed and unhappy. And if he gets too unhappy, he'll leave your team and then you won't be able to use his perks. So 
yeah, kind of fun. While you are working on the car, there is a full customization system. You can like paint your car whatever color you want, put on sponsors, stickers, things like that. And you can customize your driver as well. With the cars, there are a bunch of body shells that you can use and the Big F1 fans will be able to recognize these as certain iconic cars throughout the years. So the tracks you'll be racing at are probably my favorite part of this game. There are 17 tracks that I can see, all heavily inspired by real world F1 tracks. You have places like Quebec, which is Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, as well as Brussels, which is Spa, complete with Bizarro Eau Rouge. And you also have Brisbane, which is basically Albert Park with Lakeside Drive and the powerhouse and the car park section and all that. And you also have Caspian Sea, which is just Baku. It's basically identical to Baku, which is kind of funny. All the tracks have so many little references that you can pick up on and were a joy to drive. Sometimes my brain would switch off and I'd like miss a corner or something and I'd have to be like, oh no, this isn't actual Silverstone. This is like rip off Silverstone. <laughs> I need to make sure I'm focusing on where I'm going. The best way to describe these tracks would be like if you've watched the Gran Turismo movie. Uh, the final race, for example, is at Le Mans and it looks like Mo Le Mans, but it's also Hungara Ring. But it is also Le Mans and it, it, it hurts your brain to look at and your brain doesn't know how to deal with it. And I had the same kind of feeling playing New Star GP. It's like, this looks like the Red Bull ring, but it's not quite the same. It's very cool. The drivers you race against are all based on real world drivers as well. You have Ayrton Serafino, Gilles Verville, you have Keke Ronko and Kamui Kurosaka. If you crash into them during a race, they'll throw up little emojis as well, like the Sophie AI, which I found really cute. And they'll also sometimes corner you after a race to complain or call you out in the newspapers if you're out of control. I flipped Nicky Lauba on the first corner of one of my races and he went to the tabloids and complained about me. There's also music in the background, which is pretty fun. The opening title theme goes unnecessarily hard. I love it. How is the game to drive? Well, I think it's a good balance. It's definitely an arcade racer and you're not gonna be getting any oversteer, I would say. The cars are super understeer limited and you won't be drifting things like Daytona as well. I'd say the driving is more like Virtua Racer or one of my all time favorite arcade games, Ace Driver Victory Lap. It's not the best handling in the world, but it's enough that you'll get into the zone and you'll just kind of focus on banging out times. The level of immersion is also great. The sounds are kind of fun and you'll have sparks flying up in the air. You'll have debris if you go off track and on your tires. Uh, if you hit a wall, your front wing will start wobbling around and all sorts of stuff. It's very funny. I've had a heap of fun playing New Star GP and it's probably my go-to racing game now if I don't want to like sweat it out in an iRacing GT3 lobby or something like that. And if you're into cute F1 references, I think it's totally worth buying. The few things I will say um, is that it is, I think, kind of expensive at the moment for what it is personally. And um, yeah, there's only 10, 10 races on the track at each time. I personally didn't notice it. I thought the racing felt really busy with 10 cars, but if you want a full grid of like 20 plus races, uh, this might not be the game for you. Otherwise, if you're playing New Star GP, feel free to let me know in the comments if you're enjoying it. And if you like the video, feel free to leave a like and you can subscribe to Overtake for more sim racing and arcade racing videos as well. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.